Jonathan, welcome to the program. Great to be with you, Charlie. So Jonathan, build out for our audience the main thesis of your book, The Return of the Gods. Yeah, The Return of the Gods is, uh, well, number one, it's probably the most explosive book I've ever written. Um, and it is, it, it is what if behind what is happening, the changes, the transformation of our culture, um, what if it goes back to what actually the Bible says? What if it goes back to what the Bible speaks of as gods? And what if the gods are not just fiction, but there's something actually behind them? And what if they return? What if what if the they actually were in the world? What if they were affecting our culture? What would happen to it? You know, and what happens when you turn away from God? Well, well, the thing what the return of the gods is is really showing that it's happening. Once you see it, Charlie, you can't unsee it. It is, it is really what is behind everything. We're all dealing with it. And the thing is that. I wrote the return of gods not only to you know reveal this but also to arm god's people because if you're in a fight and you don't know what you're fighting chances are you're not going to win you know That's so right. so it, it's really it's stunning it's a it's a, you know listen it's stunned me and i knew that this is the hour that this had to come out so so jonathan i want to make sure i get our terms right i believe when you're saying the return of the gods you mean the idea of fake gods you you are a monotheist, correct? You believe in <laughs> no. I, I I know that's a, a, a silly question, but you're you're not yes. suggesting that yes. we, we live in a, yes. in a polytheistic reality. No, no, yeah, of course, yeah. I'm a believer in Jesus. I'm a Jewish believer and a pastor and a rabbi, whatever. Of yeah. course, um, but yeah. So I, no, I don't. Yeah, but let, yeah. Let me. That's good that you asked because let me go right into it. Um, yeah, the Bible says that when it speaks about the false gods, and that's exactly what we're speaking about, mm -hmm. it says that behind them were, it uses a Hebrew word, the Hebrew word is, is Shedim. Shedim, it's in Deuteronomy, it's in the Psalms, mm -hmm. it means literally not, not, you know, fables, it means spirits, entities, beings, um, and when you, when it gets translated into the New Testament, it becomes the Greek, the Greek word, Daimonia, where you get the word demon from it. So what it, what it's saying is that behind the gods are actually spirits. When a, in the the pagan world was worshiping gods, they're actually under a possession. You know, when you turn away from God, this is what happens. So so this was and, and this is pretty universal. All everyone worshipped gods except except Israel that worshipped God until they turned away from God. You know. So the the for, the first question is what happened to all this? Well, what happened was the gospel. What happened was Jesus. And when the power of God came into the ancient world, literally, it drove out the gods. That's why you don't see many people worshiping Zeus outright and all yes. these things. It was gone. But if behind the gods are spirits, that means it wasn't just turning away from gods. It means it was a casting out. It was a it was an exorcism of Western civilization. That's what's made the West so unique. Yes. And so yes. the thing is, so the thing is that then then the next question is that okay, where did they go? And then, and the next kind of clue to set up what I'm, what I'm gonna, what I'm sharing, is that Jesus gave a parable, and he said, when a spirit goes out of a man, it goes looking for a place, doesn't find it, says, I'm gonna go back to my house, the guy, and he goes back and finds the house, the guy, uh, empty, in order, clean, brings seven other spirits. The Bible That's says right. more evil than itself, and the latter state of the man is worse than the first state. But now people think it's just talking about a guy. But when you read the end of it, in Matthew, it says, so it shall be with this generation. And so the premise is this, the warning is this, that, that first of all, cultures, not just people, can be oppressed and possessed. They can be delivered and they can be repossessed. So the warning is for America and for the West and for much of the world, modern world, any culture, any civilization that has been delivered of these spirits by God, of paganism, by God, if it should ever turn away from God, then the spirits that were cast out of it will come back into it, it to repossess it. If you want to understand what's been happening to America for the last half century, we're witnessing a repossession. We're witnessing a turn from a Christian civilization into a pagan one. And this is this is the beginning no, this, of this. The, this is key. So if you if you read the Torah, which means teacher, through the lens that there was an obsession from the writing of it to, to really wage war on river civilization pagan polytheism right this idea of one god that is not in nature but created nature this idea of one morality this idea of 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 hashem or adonai or jehovah whatever term you want to use was it was it was not just foreign it was a mystery and a threat to the predominant views and if you look at some of the themes that especially the first 11 books of genesis lay out we're seeing almost a resurgence of that, whether it be earth worship, 
whether it be doing what is right in your own eyes. So when you say a return of the gods, we're almost just seeing a replaying of the same temptations and vices that the first couple books of the scriptures go out of their way to wage war on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we are witnessing is, I mean, it, it's kind of the reverse. It's, it's the reverse of what happened when the gospel came in. It's, it's a de-Christianization, which means also it is it is a, a turning away from monotheism. Well, when you turn away from God, yes. what, what the warning is, I mean, look, look at the look at the case examples we have. Look at Russia. Look what happened when Russia turned away from its Christian foundation. It wasn't secular. It was demonic. Look what happened to Germany when they turned away from God. It was not secular. It was demonic. We are now witnessing that in America. And, and the warning that Jesus gives is the house will not stay empty. Something else will you take God out of the schools. Something else will come into the schools. You take God from the children, something else will come into the children. And that's what we are witnessing. Everything you just said, it's not an accident. In fact, why things are so irrational. We say, like, how could they believe this? How could they do this right. to children? Well, this is all part of it. you know. And the thing is, Charlie, it's not just a general thing. There are specific entities or gods or spirits that or the Bible speaks about yes. that, are literally, yes. Yes, that are literally at work right in our culture right now. So, so that, that's a really deep and important point that honestly, I don't even have theological clarity on. And I want your take. I want to spend some of our hour on this yeah. because I ask pastors and I get different answers, understandably. And you've obviously done some deep thinking on this, which is what does the Bible say? Who is Satan? Does he have lieutenants that we would call demons? Mm -hmm. And so walk us through what the Bible says outside of folklore or tradition what specifically does the Bible say? Who Satan is? What is his jurisdiction? And does he have, you know, lieutenants or demons or helpers? Yeah, well, well, number one, you know, Satan in Hebrew, really, it's a Hebrew word that means Satan means the one who opposes you. It becomes Accuser. a Greek diabolos. We get devil, you know, from that means the opposer. Well, it says, the Bible clearly says that Satan is, it was also a spirit, an, an, an angelic being. That fell. So therefore, you have you got starting with that. But interesting too, because Charlie, you know that you know one of the words for for Satan is Beelzebub, you know, or Beelzebub. Yeah. Well, that actually comes from a Hebrew word that is Baal Zavu, which means Baal, which is a, one which is one of the spirits or one of the gods that Israel worships. So so yes, he has there. The Bible says very clearly there is one. I mean, there is Satan, and then there are spirits that are that are part of this realm, just like God has angels. There are spirits. Well, what, you know, what would a spirit do more than draw attention, you know, draw the worship of God away from God to itself? So when you look at the pagan world, you know, this is this if there's a reason why it's demonic. You know, when you look at pagan worship, it's demonic. It's not just, you know, they they have all the signs of possession shaking and foaming at the mouth. Yes. And all, and actually, and a possessed culture is a is literally, I mean, a, a pagan culture is literally demonic. So therefore, yes. And and the thing is that we've kind of forgotten that at our peril to our peril because yeah, so when you take out god it all comes back jonathan khan joins us now jonathan welcome to the program <laughs> 